Spaceships from Starbase Texas face increasing challenges. The FAA, backed by environmental agencies and regulations, continues to slow down the progress of spaceships. But what if spaceflight operations were moved to Florida, the true center of the aerospace industry? With NASA's support, SpaceX could launch more spacecraft. Is this a realistic possibility? We'll discuss that in today's NR Studio episode. Let's get started. FAA regulations have become an increasingly controversial topic in the industry, and as a result, the Starship 5 flight has been significantly delayed. Obviously, this will impact many future missions, especially as SpaceX attempts to change its goals. According to the FAA, any change in mission requires a change in FAA license and approval. Additionally, in recent statements, the FAA has repeatedly accused SPACEX of violating federal and Texas laws. Agencies such as the Fish and Wildlife Service, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, Environmental Protection Agency, Cards Against Humanity, Save RGB, and others have repeatedly accused SpaceX of various violations that have resulted in fines and delays to the Starship project. As a result, Texas, once considered a promised land for Starship, has slowly become a bottleneck for SpaceX's development, so there's a solution. The interesting idea I mentioned is moving operations overseas, but it has the downside that it wouldn't be hard to implement quickly. Could SpaceX move somewhere else? Many point to Florida, which is considered the holy grail of the aerospace industry. Under NASA's management, the Florida coast is home to several launch systems operated by various companies. SpaceX already operates two Falcon 9 systems at Launch Complex 39A and Space Launch Complex 40. At 39A, SpaceX also planned to build a launch tower, orbital launch platform, and other subsystems. Although the OLM was eventually dismantled, it appears to be a sign of a redesign underway. Plans for Starship Florida have been proposed. In the FAA's environmental impact statement, SpaceX plans to launch 44 times a year from Florida. The proposal includes several takeoff and landing options. The first option would be to launch and land Super Heavy and Starship at LC-39A. With this approach, in addition to the systems already in place at the launch complex, SpaceX would build a dedicated capture tower. Unlike the Starbase system, where the launch tower is responsible for both launches and landings, this new configuration would distribute the tasks among multiple towers allowing SpaceX to simplify and optimize the design of each tower for its specific mission. In addition to launching and landing at LC-39A, SpaceX plans to land the scene on a drone ship, a method they have successfully used on Falcon rockets for years. This approach gives SpaceX more flexibility, allowing it to choose between land and sea landings depending on the situation. Compared to a land landing, a drone landing offers advantages in terms of flexibility and flight optimization. This method remains a viable option, especially given SpaceX's extensive experience with Falcon rockets. Implementing this system on Starship requires minimal training. SpaceX has also mentioned the possibility of direct ocean landings at select locations. However, this is likely an emergency measure and is rarely used because it does not align with SpaceX's long-term goals. Not only will the launch and landing systems be upgraded, but Starship's operations in Florida will also undergo changes. For example, a 150-meter-long Starship is on the way. This increase in size will allow Starship to carry more fuel and cargo, with reports detailing a thrust capacity of up to 4,100 tons for Super Heavy and 2,600 tons for Starship. To accommodate this mass, Starship will be equipped with a new version of its engines that will provide 103 million newtons, or 10,500 tons of thrust for Super Heavy, and 28 million newtons, or 2,855 tons for Starship. This is likely the 330-plus engine that Musk referred to in previous presentations, as well as during his interview with Tim Dodd on Starbase on Astronaut Every Day. However, we must consider the urgency of the situation. While the proposed plan to move operations to Florida appears to be moving forward, the approval process may take some time. What we are debating is whether SpaceX can move to Florida soon. Is it feasible? In short, I believe it is. In short, SpaceX has shown impressive speed in building the Starship launch system, manufacturing, and testing, as we've seen with Launch Tower 5 and Star Factory. What they're doing now is supporting NASA. 
Launching in Florida gives SpaceX the advantage of avoiding many of the environmental challenges the agency faces at Starbase in Texas. Under NASA's management, Starship launch operations can continue smoothly. NASA, more than anyone, wants Starship moving quickly to support the Artemis program, which would give SpaceX an added advantage if it moved its operations there. Plus, Florida's geographic advantage for launches is undeniable. However, this option does present some challenges. NASA has previously expressed concerns when SpaceX built the Starship launch tower, fearing that Starship operations could interfere with Falcon launches. France recently, the first quarter launch statistics again showed SpaceX's dominance. They launched 429,125 tons, while China was second with only 29,426 tons, which means SpaceX launched 14 times more than their competitor behind them. Regarding Flight 5, SpaceX recently released images of the preparations, along with the following message. SpaceX engineers spent years preparing and months testing the booster capture attempt on Flight 5, with engineers spending tens of thousands of hours building infrastructure to maximize our chances of success. Of course, without SpaceX, we would be outpaced by China in many ways. It's fair to say that if we lose this advantage, or even the leading position, because of internal issues in that country. What do you think about the FAA administrator's statement? Should Mike and his agency be kicked out of the aerospace industry? Say yes in the comments if you agree. So be sure to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Despite the challenges, SpaceX continues to make impressive progress with its Falcon 9 rocket. On September 24th at midnight Eastern time, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from SLC-4E in California, marking the 64th year of Starlink missions. The booster for this mission, B-1081, successfully landed on the Shure, I Still Love You, or O-C-I-S-L-Y, drone ship, completing its 10th mission. This landing was ASOS LY's 103rd and the 351st overall for a SpaceX booster. B-1081 has previously supported several high-profile missions, including two to the International Space Station, with Crew-7 and CRS-29, two climate monitoring satellites for NASA's PACE and ES's Earth Care, and the Transporter-10 rideshare mission. Most importantly, with this mission, SpaceX achieved a 90-second launch this year, officially surpassing the previous record set last year. Combining one Falcon Heavy mission and two Starship missions, SpaceX now has 95 missions completed by 2024. Looking ahead, SpaceX has more milestones to reach, with just three launches away from matching last year's total of 98, and they need two more than that to reach 100 launches per year. The Falcon 9 itself is eight missions away from reaching its 100th launch, with a target of 148 launches a year and more than three months to reach it. SpaceX is on track. Records are still being broken despite the setbacks. The launch schedule is getting tighter as the year draws to a close. So stay tuned for SpaceX's next move. In addition to SpaceX, Firefly Aerospace has also made significant progress this year, recently landing a major launch contract. NASA awarded Firefly, a Texas company, a contract on behalf of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, through its Vader Launch Services program. Vader Launch Services allows NASA to offer fixed-price contracts for satellite launches. As part of this contract, Firefly will launch Quick Sounder, NOAA's next-generation environmental satellite prototype, into low Earth orbit. While the award amount has not been disclosed, the Vader program offers a maximum value of $300 million for all contracts. During its five-year commissioning period, according to NOAA's website, Quick Sounder is part of the Near Earth Orbit Network, or NEON a new generation of polar orbiting weather satellites. Its mission is to collect critical weather data for several organizations, including the National Weather Service. As noted on NOAA's website, the Quick Sounder mission supports NOAA's next generation architecture for its upcoming low earth orbit program, which provides critical data to the National Weather Service, the National Weather Industry, and other users around the world. NOAA is currently scheduled to launch before February 2026. NOAA is working with NASA to accelerate the development of small and medium satellites to improve weather forecasting, disaster management, and climate monitoring.
NASA will manage the development and launch of these satellites, while NOAA will provide funding, technical requirements, and manage post-launch operations. This contract is a significant milestone for Firefly, providing an opportunity to build greater credibility in the aerospace industry. Historically, NOAA has relied on highly reliable companies like SpaceX for its satellite launches, making this both an opportunity and a challenge for Firefly. It will be interesting to see how they handle this important responsibility. As folks head off for today's episode, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.